Hey, I want to take a second and talk to you about fear. Because right now, if you're looking at businesses, if you're looking at franchises, if you're thinking about investing into something or making the leap, finally quitting your corporate job, then what is naturally going to come up for you is fear. And fear is going to disguise itself as many different things. You're going to want to make sure to stick around because in this video, I'm going to be really open and honest and talk about one, my journey with fear in business and making business decisions, how that's affected me, how that stopped me, but more importantly, how I figured out how to master it, tame fear, use it to my advantage so that I can make great business decisions with more ease, confidence, and clarity. So let's jump in. So let's do this. I'm the, we're gonna take a walk across the street because I gotta go get something from uh, from Office Depot, whatever that place is called. But I wanna show you something real quick before I leave the office. All right, so this is an area of my office. It's just right behind where I sit. And one, I love this place. I bought a bunch of their pieces of art and I've gotta put the other ones up. But it says success, the price of entry, hustle, execution, discipline, ambition, sacrifice, patience, failure, and focus. Now, yes, that is my grizzly bear from when I ran my Spartan Super, the six mile race, and a picture of my family. I was gonna see if Bridget wanted to hop into this video, but she's in her office in a meeting. So, what's cool is that we have this office together. It's a, uh, geez, how many square feet is that? I think it's like 1,200 square feet. Uh, so, it's cool to be able to work in the same place together. But, one of the things on that Monopoly piece of art was failure right? It's hard to see the LCD with, um, with my sunglasses on, but one of the reasons why you experience fear in trying to make a decision around what franchise or business to buy or what decision to make or actually pulling the trigger after you've been researching for six months or a year, it's because of fear and, and the fear of failure, right? So if you realize that one of the reasons why you're experiencing fear is because you're afraid to fail, it makes you start to think, well, what's the worst case scenario? Most people don't want to think about the worst case scenario because they don't want it to happen and they're trying to avoid it. But sometimes it takes confronting your fear in order to finally be able to tame it and master it and make a decision that so that you're able to move forward. And so if you thought about, hey, if I pull the trigger on this business, if I buy this business, what is the worst decision that happens for me? This car was coming through like a bat out of hell. I thought it was gonna hit me when it took this turn. But like, what's the scariest thing that could happen? What's the worst thing that could happen if I wind up buying this business? If I wind up pulling the trigger? If I wind up leaving my job and taking this leap? Like map it out, what's the worst thing that can happen? And the reality is, the worst case scenario usually doesn't play out. In most cases, it usually doesn't play out. But by you seeing it and seeing what that potential worst case scenario is like, maybe you go, okay, it's actually not that bad. And if that happened, this is how I'd be able to recover from it. But as long as you keep trying to avoid failure, you're never gonna be able to pull the trigger or make a decision. And here's the thing, you learn from failure. Talk to any successful entrepreneur. Talk to anyone who's built something. You fail along the way. You have micro failures, you have mini failures, you have bigger failures, but it's through that failure that you that you learn and you grow to be able to succeed more effectively next time. And so right now I'm heading to the shopping center, the one across the street from the office that I recorded that video about. We'll post a little snapshot of that video. When I said, guess how many franchises are in the shopping center? And so go watch that video to see how many of the 54 businesses in the shopping center are franchises. I think you'll be surprised. But here's the thing. In the US alone, there's over 780,000 franchise establishments. You know, that's, okay, let's say there are different people that own more than one, but those are 780,000 businesses that someone had to overcome the fear to create that business. And the reality is if you never take the step, you never know. Here's what I've learned, here's what I've experienced is that what's worse 
than fear, what's worse than the failure is the regret, is the feeling of like, man, I never know. I got excited about this business. I got excited about this opportunity and I never did anything. I never pulled the trigger. This has been a dream of mine for so long. And I just, I lay at bed awake thinking, what if I would have done it? What if I would have pulled the trigger? And you just never know because you never did anything. So here's how I think about fear. And I'll tell you in just a minute. So in just a second, I'll tell you about how I think about fear in business and, and uh, how it pops up and what, what I do to stop it. But I want you to think and look for a second. So behind me is this business called Nick Filet. It's a, a new franchise business. I think they've only got a couple of locations. And so I want you to think about that process. Step number one, the first fear that's gonna pop up is the fear of choosing the wrong business. What if I choose the wrong business? What if I wind up not liking it, right? Some people get, get caught up in just that first step, just choosing the wrong business. Then step number two is how do I fund it? What if I lose my money? What if I invest in this business and it's not successful? What if it doesn't work? Well, what if it doesn't work? I mean, that's a reality that can happen in the business. Here's another question. What if it works and you become wildly successful and you start creating the life, the income, the lifestyle that you've always wanted? I mean, that's another possibility as well. So look guys, here's the thing is that fear is often an illusion but there are tangible fears that you've got to address and be able to look at and understand and break down in the business. So fear of failure, sometimes fear of success, right? Because people, if they actually meet the goal and make it happen, you start thinking, well, what will other people think of me? How will I handle this? What will I do? You start thinking too far ahead, right? So just acknowledge that I've come to acknowledge now that when I make a business decision, if I'm starting a new business or making any major decision in my life, that fear is just, I already know it's going to pop up. I already know there's going to be doubts and anxieties that are going to pop up in my head. And it's just a matter of turning down the volume on the fear, turning up the volume on your voice of courage and reason and what's possible in your life. Because if you really think about and break down why you're fearful, then you can really think about what's actually stopping you and holding you back. All right, so the whole point of everything I'm saying is bring your fears to light. Write them down, acknowledge them. If you're looking at starting or owning a business, um, and you're talking to your spouse about it and they're not on board, uh, what are their fears? Sit down, have a conversation about it. Not a, a heated conversation about it, obviously, but try to have a rational conversation. Hey, if we do this business, what are your fears? One of Bridget's fears when we decided to open up our first franchise location is that I had had a track record of trying a couple different things and not following through. So I tried a couple of like internet marketing businesses or something like that and I didn't follow through on those businesses. Granted, the risk of capital wasn't that much. It wasn't a huge risk of, uh, risk of capital, right? And so her fear was that we were gonna invest $300,000 in this business and that I wasn't gonna be engaged or I was gonna get bored with it or checked out and that was gonna be a risk to us. And so what was helpful for us was to have a conversation and dialogue around that fear instead of her just saying, no, I'm not on board and I don't want to do this and we're not doing this, that we had a conversation about what we were fearful about. What's your conversation? What are you fearful about? I just got off the phone with uh, some clients that are, um, that are going to be hiring me to help them through the kind of uh, finding a business and career transition process, going from employee to entrepreneur, finding you know, a franchise or business that makes sense for them. And the wife actually reached out to me. I'd been talking to the husband, the wife reached out to me and she said, hey, you know, these are some of the concerns that I have and that we have. And so that was great. That's where it's amazing where, you know, when the spouse reaches out or we have the dialogue together and go, hey, this is what we're scared of. This is what we're nervous about. Um, this is what we've been experiencing. And this is our fear. And we have an opportunity to talk through it. And that's 
when you're able to move forward and make decisions in business, is when you're able to physically hold the fear, hold it is in terms of writing it down, acknowledging what it is. And I know I've just been kind of repeating myself and saying the same thing over and over again, but you know, I have a morning routine that I do and one of my mantras that I say is, um, I take action in spite of fear. And so start to build that as a belief system and a mantra that you have is that you take action in spite of fear. This guy's honking behind me. Um, because the fear's gonna come up all of your life. So make sure to like, subscribe. Um, let me know if you like this style of video, I'm trying to do more and more stuff where I change it up, get outside, talk to you about different things, all aspects of the career transition process of buying a franchise, going from employee to entrepreneur, because there's so many components, the mental side, the financial side, the strategic side, the planning side, the what business to find, the skill sets, there's so many different components to it. And I wanna be your one-stop shop for you to find everything and all the support that you need here. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit like, go download my seven step blueprint to business profits in 60 days at tarikjohnson.com. And if you want help, if you want one-on-one -on -one help throughout this process, this is exactly what I help my clients with. I handhold them, help them throughout the process so that it makes it easier and they shortcut their path to success. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can click the link below, but it's tarikjohnson.com slash consulting. I look forward to seeing you guys soon.